And welcome to this Sunday where we get to be refreshed and strengthened in that loving word of our Savior Jesus. We'll begin our service with him 735 as that talks about that Old Testament lesson that we're going to read about. I'd invite you to please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve... God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Amen. 
for the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil. Hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. And we pray, God of all power and might, you are the giver of all that is good. Help us love you with all our heart. Strengthen us in true faith. Provide us with all we need. And keep us safe in your care. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2. Do you hear and do you listen? Not to man's word, but to the Lord's. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. The Spirit entered into me as he spoke to me and brought me up to my feet. Then I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to disloyal nations who have been disloyal to me. They and their fathers have rebelled against me to this very day. These children of mine are brazen-faced and hard-hearted. I am sending you to them, and you are to tell them that this is what the Lord God says. Then whether they listen or do not listen, for they are a rebellious house, then they will know that a prophet has been among them. That is God's word. We'll continue with him 469.
Our second reading this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the Lord keeps the Apostle Paul humble and the Lord keeps the Apostle Paul falling back on the strength and security that Christ offers. Paul says, Therefore, to keep me from becoming arrogant due to the extraordinary nature of these revelations, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, so that I would not become arrogant. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that he would take it away from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, because my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will be glad to boast all the more in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may shelter me. That is why I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions and difficulties for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. That is the word of our Savior. Jesus lives, the victory is won. Alleluia. Please stand for our gospel lesson. From Mark 6, Jesus teaches us a hard lesson. To not be surprised if friends or even family reject your sharing of Jesus with them. Jesus left there and went to his hometown. His disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did this man learn these things? What is this wisdom that has been given to this man? How is it that miracles such as these are performed by his hands? Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his own relatives and in his own house. He could not do any miracles there except to lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went around the villages teaching. It is the word of our Savior. Please be seated. So we'll continue with the next hymn.
The Apostle Paul, as you know, was a great sharer of Jesus. With great courage and great clarity, he would travel throughout the Roman Empire teaching the people and all who would hear that saving message of salvation through Jesus Christ and him alone. And the Lord brought great blessing on that apostle Paul. As Paul would travel, he would start up churches, he would strengthen churches, he would gather God's people together. The Lord blessed Paul in allowing him to perform miracles. Perhaps his most famous miracle was raising someone from the dead. Paul was bold in his sharing of Jesus. As mobs would form to have him arrested, yelling and screaming, hoping to have him killed. But yet the Apostle Paul went on. Paul was a great servant of Jesus. He got to see many revelations from the Lord that we can't even begin to fathom. With that little bit of background, we look at our verses, a few of our verses from 2 Corinthians 12. Therefore, Paul says, Therefore, to keep me from becoming arrogant, due to the extraordinary nature of these revelations, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. He said, I would not become arrogant. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that he would take it away from me. Paul was that great servant of Jesus, but Paul had this thorn in his flesh. And what that thorn was, no one really knows. But Paul knew it was from the Lord. Paul knew that the Lord himself had given, them, given him this ailment, this pain, this thing that sometimes hindered his sharing of Jesus. And Paul wanted it gone. Three times he prayed. Three times he asked the Lord to take it away. And three times the response was no, no, and no. But Paul recognized that this thorn in his flesh, whatever it was, also served a good purpose. It would have been very easy for Paul who could raise the dead. It would have been very easy for Paul who got to see extraordinary things because the Lord was working through him. It would be pretty easy for Paul to get just as ginormous head as he saw success and masses following him, sometimes for good and sometimes for wickedness, to become arrogant. Paul recognized that this thorn from God was to keep him humble. He also recognized that it had this purpose. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you because my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will be glad to boast all the more in my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may shelter me. That is why I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, and persecutions and difficulties for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. That thorn humbled him. But what that thorn also did was get Paul not to focus on himself and his own abilities, his own strengths to carry out the work of God, but it got Paul to fall back on that grace of God, the strength of God, the protection of God, and all his trials, adversities, and successes because the apostle Paul knew that his greatest strength was not even close to comparing to the greatest weakness of God. It was much better for Paul to rely on Christ than on himself and his own abilities. Paul recognized that about the thorn in his flesh sent by God. But at the same time, Paul also knew that that thorn could be a curse as he said this, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan 
to torment me. Paul knew the thorn was from God for God's good purpose, for God's good will in his life, but he also knew that that thorn could give Satan words and access into his life. That Satan could take that thorn and speak into his life as Paul is out there busting it for Jesus, as Paul is out there sometimes being physically abused all for Christ. It would have been very easy for Satan to tell Paul, you know what? How valuable are you really to God? Look what he is allowing you to go through. Does God really love you, Paul? Look what he is allowing you to suffer. You are sacrificing so much, Paul, for God. Your Father in heaven. And look how he has and is treating you. Paul realized that Satan could take that thorn and drive a wedge between him and God. That thorn was a blessing and a curse. So now you look at your life and feel free to compare it to the Apostle Paul's, and you'd probably notice some similarities. Paul would admit that he was blessed by God, and I think all of us would say we also are blessed by God. We are blessed to have friends. We're blessed to have family. We're blessed to know and believe that Jesus himself actually loves us. We are blessed. But maybe also, like Paul, you are starting to notice some thorns in your life. And maybe some of our thorns are severe and some of our thorns aren't quite that bad yet. But they are there. We don't know what Paul's thorn is, and I don't know what your thorns are, and you don't know what my thorns are. Maybe your thorn is mental. Maybe you battle with severe anxiety. Maybe you battle with depression. Maybe your thorn is deep feelings of guilt and shame over things that you've done things that you've said. Or maybe the thorn that the Lord has allowed to come into your life is more physical. An illness, a disease that is slowly wreaking havoc on you or your loved one. Or maybe it's an injury that the Lord has allowed to come into your life that's going to change your life forever. Maybe your thorn involves relationships as there is now hostility inside your family. Hostility with you and your kids, hostility between husband and wife, hostility between you and your parents. What is the thorn that the Lord has allowed to stick in your flesh? that causes you pain, that can cause you misery. And how does that thorn affect your life? Is it supposed to be like Paul, where that thorn, whatever it is, leads you to fall back on that grace of God in your life, to fall back on the strength of God, to fall back in the shelter of Christ because you need him and you need to rely on him because without him you will fall? Or does that thorn... Or does that thorn serve as a conduit for Satan? As Satan speaks into your life. Because just like Paul, how could your loving Father in heaven allow you to have this thorn? This suffering, this pain, this sadness, this struggle in your life. Does Satan take that thorn and control your emotions to get mad, to get disappointed, to get sad with God.
does Satan torment you? Therefore, to keep me from becoming arrogant due to the extraordinary nature of these revelations, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me, so that I would not become arrogant three times. I pleaded with the Lord about this, that he would take it away from me, and he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, because my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will be glad to boast all the more in my weaknesses, weaknesses so that the power of Christ may shelter me. Paul had that thorn. He didn't want it. He wanted it out of his life. He knew at the same time it was a blessing because it got him to fall back on Christ and his strength and not his own. But he also realized that the curse that could be there as Satan could speak into his life and get him to question God. And so it is with us. What is your thorn? What is the thorn in your flesh that causes you concern, that causes you worry, that causes you a tad bit of even pain? And does Satan take that thorn and speak to you? My guess is all of us have heard the voice of Satan with whatever thorn is in our life. My guess is all of us have on occasion slipped up and given in to the words of Satan and questioned and gotten angry and mad with God for what he has allowed to come into our life. But thankfully, just as Paul had you and I have, when we slip and fall, we have someone who is there to catch us. And it is God himself. That one who catches you when you slip and give in to sin, that one who catches you when you slip and fall in to listening to the voice of Satan instead of trusting in that loving word of our Savior, God says, here is my son. Here is my son, Jesus, who will lay down his life for you. Here is my son, Jesus, who is going to do the unthinkable. You ruined this relationship between me and you by the actions that you have committed, but my son, Jesus, is going to heal that relationship by giving up his life on the cross and declaring you innocent, forgiving you the sins you have committed against me. The precious blood of Jesus Christ has washed over you, setting you free, releasing you from the wrath of God that you and I have earned for the things that we have done. There in Jesus Christ, you stand fully and completely freely forgiven by his work, by his action. In Jesus Christ, you have been brought into the family of God and what that does for you when those thorns come, what God wants you to do is not see them as this giant curse, but to look at them as a blessing, to remind yourself, yes, I have this ailment, but guess what? As long as I remain built on that solid rock of Christ and trust in that love that he has shown to me throughout my life, I will be strong. Because I am told not even the gates of hell can overpower my Savior Jesus. And it is Jesus Christ himself who lives in me. And it is Jesus Christ himself who is with me forever. So I don't need to be afraid. I just trust. And I fall back on the God who was there before time began and who will be there after time ends. I fall back on the God who loved me enough to say, you I have chosen, you I have made mine, all because of Christ. Rely on the strength of Jesus, your loving Savior, always. Amen. Please, dear Heavenly Father, 
We commend Brad Ratzow into your care as he undergoes surgery again next week for cancer. We pray that you would grant success to the surgery and bring about a full and speedy recovery. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and always give you his peace. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for coming. We have just a, a handful of announcements here for you. Some upcoming events. July 22nd, there's going to be a blood drive in the gym at school. You need to register for your time slot to donate on the Red Cross website. As I said last week, we got more details now. Now, August 4th through August 6th, St. Paul's River Adventure Camp. Register on the St. Paul's website or on the sign-up sheet in the back of church. You can also use that, that scanny thing on your phone. You can see the signs on all the entrances and exits, as well as the August 8th golf outing. It's in Oconomowoc. I don't know how to say the golf course, Paganikia golf course, whatever it is. After that, you don't have to be a good golfer. Uh, in fact, if you're bad, that'll be better for some people's ego. So come to it. We got slots for 32 people. So that's eight foursomes. So come to that if you'd like. If you don't want to golf after the golf outing, there'll be a, a meal here in between the church and the parsonage. It'll be your chance to sneak into our house, see all the damage that we've done to it, walk around and check everything out. We'd invite you to come just, if you don't want to golf, just come for the fun and fellowship that will be had out there. Uh, there's more information on the Facebook page and links to the corresponding website, so please do keep that in mind. And then painters are needed over at the school. If you haven't been at the school, our trustees, Brian Tweeden, David Alm, uh, uh, John Yeager, and there's probably others, those are the three I remember, they are over there, and you should see the transformation that has taken place inside that school, especially the gym. Just go look at it sometime. The doors are locked now, but sometime go look at it. Then one other thing. Out, oh, talk to Brian Tweeden if you're able to paint. Talk to Brian Tweeden if you're able to paint. The other thing is August 22nd was going to be our installation picnic and, and uh, uh, party over at the barn. Uh, Tim Otterstetter's barn, that has been moved to August 29th because of a scheduling conflict. So August 29th, still the same service times, August 29th will be the installation of our three new teachers in the welcome picnic party over at Tim Otterstetter's barn. So hopefully you all can make that. Now, have yourself a most blessed week. And there's one other thing. Next Sunday is my last Sunday. Then I'm going on vacation for a week. I'll be gone from the 19th, I think, through the, the 25th. So there's also that. Now, have a great week. Mm -hmm.